This is Dr. Weber, medical oncologist, uh, reading the Prostate Cancer Commentary, uh, volume 174 of February 2023. The topic is managing biochemical failure after radiation therapy. The importance of considering both PSA and PSA doubling time. The set point for biochemical failure was standardized in 2006 based on the consensus conference of experts in Phoenix, Arizona. The value agreed upon was, quote, PSA plus two nanograms per ml above the post-radiation PSA nadir. Hence, the Phoenix definition, as described in an article by Roche uh, in 2006. The intention was to set a standard definition to allow comparisons between clinical trials, different institutions, and different treatments, a value that correlated with cancer-specific and overall survival. They were careful to emphasize the difference between defining a definition applicable to individuals as opposed to a population, such as a clinical trial. It's as a quote, it is very important for readers to note that the definitions proposed are to define success or failure in the context of a population, not an individual. Defining PSA biochemical success for an individual versus a population are separate issues, with the former being guided by clinical judgment, end of quote, such as clinical judgment as guided by pretreatment PSA, Gleason score, tumor stage, and PSA doubling time, again referring to Roche. One of the conference experts thought that including a measure of PSA dynamics, such as the slope of the PSA, would strengthen the metric, but this was thought to be too complicated for their purposes. Phoenix definition for recurrence is inappropriate for individual management. In today's setting, two aspects of the Phoenix definition may be considered weaknesses. One, it was constructed based on data obtained from imaging with now considered less sensitive CT and technetium bone scans. And two, a single PSA value falls short of accounting for the biological heterogeneity inherent mm -hmm. in prostate cancer. The deficiencies in the use of the Phoenix threshold to guide individual management was addressed by Janssen in an article uh, in the European Association of Urology 2021 regarding detection of recurrent prostate cancer using the PSMA PET scans in patients whose PSA values fell short of the Phoenix criterion of primary for radiation therapy. Of 315 men studied, 63 were scanned below the Phoenix threshold. The Gleason score was six in 19%, seven in 37%, eight in 11%, and 9 to 10 in 19%, unknown in 14%. The median post-radiation nadir was less than 0.1 nanogram per ml. And the median PSA at the time of PET scanning was 1.3 nanograms per ml. The value for PSA doubling time was a rapid six months and the time from the PSA nadir to the PET scan was 47 months. Their findings, in 53 of the 63 scanned below the Phoenix threshold, 84.1% were PSMA PET positive, 33% having a local recurrence at a single site, and 80, excuse me, and 50.8% 
found to have metastatic spread. Their plea was for reevaluation of the current diagnostic workup for rising PSA after radiation therapy, quote, to potentially improve patient selection for salvage or oligometastatic directed treatment. Consideration for individuals at biochemical recurrence. The issue essentially is what PSA value at recurrence should prompt further evaluation. And this further devolves into the question as to when a PSMA PET CT is appropriate. Consideration of PET scanning involves two components. First, what is the detection rate of the PET at various PSA levels? And two, what is the likelihood at various PSA levels that a man's cancer has spread and can be detected in locations such as within the remaining prostate or beyond? Regarding detection rate, the detection rate at various PSA levels has been extensively reported for the pylori 5 PET CT and also the gallium 68 PSMA 11 PET CT. The takeaway from a large body of data, data is that both scans perform well at low values, values at which detection would lead to early treatment decisions, such as metastasis-directed stereotactic body radiation therapy. The detection rate for PSA values of less than 0.5 nanograms per ml is roughly 38 to 57 percent. Between 0.5 and 1.0 nanograms per ml, roughly 63 to 75 percent. And for PSA values between 1 and 2, 82 to 95 percent. The higher the Gleason score, the higher the detection rate. Pienta in an article, quote, predictors of the pylori 5 positive in patients with biochemical recurrence of prostate cancer after local radiation therapy. It was in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine in December of 2021. The purpose of their study was, quote, to investigate the factors predicting scan positivity and disease location in patients with biochemical relapsed prostate cancer after primary radiation therapy using prostate-specific membrane antigen-targeted pylorify PET-CT. The study group was predominantly comprised of men with high-risk cancer, Gleason score 7, 49%, and 8 or greater, 35% with a median PSA value at PET scan of 1.6 and a median PSA doubling time of 6.8 months. All men were negative on conventional CT and bone scans and were not receiving ADT. In the 50 men following prostate radiation, the pylorify scan was, quote, always negative at PSA lower than point of 1.0 nanograms per ml. And extra pelvic disease was seen only when PSA was greater than two nanograms per ml." End quote. The location of recurrence in 48% of men was intrapelvic with 75% within the prostate and 25% in the pelvic nodes. And in 44%, recurrence was seen beyond the pelvis. The predominant predictors for recurrence in this post-radiation cohort were PSA and the PSA doubling time leading up to the performance of the PET scan. Quote, the PSA and the PSA doubling time are able to predict scan positivity and disease location. In our cohort at PSA greater than two, the PSMA PET 
was almost always positive for recurrence with distant disease seen in about 45% of men after radiation and was significant higher for men with a rapid PSA doubling time. A nomogram is presented at the bottom of this commentary and it integrates PSA and PSA doubling time values. Two examples based on the nomogram illustrate the importance of PSA doubling time on recurrence. The prediction for extra pelvic recurrence is about 15% for a man whose PSA after radiation became two with a PSA doubling time of 15 months. For another man with a PSA of two whose PSA doubling time is six months, the prediction for extra pelvic recurrence is 40%. So the bottom line is at biochemical recurrence after primary irradiation, the combination of PSA and PSA doubling time can determine the likelihood of detecting metastases with the PSMA PET CT. And below is the nomogram as it appears in the Pienda article presented with permission of the author and the publisher. Based on only 50 patients, its performance will be strengthened with future validation with larger databases. And below this, uh, the explanation of how to use the nomogram is presented.